it's me, Coco. Hi, this is Liz from Buernica at Slow Fashion World. Hi, this is Hannah from Slow Fashion World Changemakers and Airy Berlin. And today I want to talk about slow fashion. So they are local designers and I really want to get to the bottom of what's the deal with slow fashion. So can you guys just tell me first off, like what is slow fashion? I would say that slow fashion is um, a little bit like uh, the opposite for fast fashion. I know people don't know exactly what fast fashion is, but if you compare to uh, fast food, let's say it's pretty much the same. No? What do you think? I agree opposite of fast fashion um, and I think it's a lot about rethinking how we're working with fashion, rethinking the relationship to our clothing, rethinking our way of dealing with clothes that now it's just like a, like a spare of the moment yeah. thing that we can get for like two euro, two dollar, whatever. Yeah, and there's a whole story behind it, no? Like all product, like, you know, fast production also, and the people who's behind the clothes who are making these clothes, so this is all fast and it's just, you know, uh, affecting uh, the entire chain. And I was also thinking when you said there's a story behind it, it's also like a story behind the production and like the, the piece itself is kind of more special and thoughtful. It's not like, just a copycat of a runway piece. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, mainly, for example, in my case, uh, oh, also your case, like when, when you have a, a clothing brand that is handmade, for example, you, you take, um, or you appreciate more this handmade work, you know, like it's slow, that's exactly like, for example, this is whole uh, hand embroidery. So it's, it, imagine all the time that it takes not to do mm -hmm. something like that. That's also why it has the name of slow fashion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I feel like it's really giving back the value to the to what is actually happening in the supply chain and the production and manufacturing. Because if we're looking at it, even fast fashion has so much value. I mean, it's like I always compare it to a cucumber that you know, you know, when we go to organic to the organic store, you know, we get a cucumber for I don't know one or two euro mm -hmm. so you have the cucumber that's like one part of one plant and then you have the cotton that you need a bunch of cotton balls a, cotton, a bunch of cotton plants to actually get in the end a t-shirt made from cotton mm -hmm. and there's so many stages in between so many people involved so many hands involved in creating like the spinning of the yarn and then weaving or knitting or you know transportation you know there's so many so many so many steps in between and yet we go to you know primark and we get a t-shirt for two euro the same like a cucumber basically you know and it's so strange to think about it and i think it's also you know to to appreciate even a t-shirt that yeah. costs you two euro there is so many hands behind so many people behind and so many so much worth and value behind that then yeah. you just think about if you're paying two euro for that shirt how many uh or like how many cents people got you know all the people behind so it's it's that's why it's so sad i was just thinking about this how we have this sense of like a i don't know how to ex explain it like a decreased sense of value for a lot of things because we have these unrealistic expectations that have been set up by fast fashion and like all this like I don't know, just mass um, mass production of things that are very, very cheap and also really bad for the environment. And I think moving forward, we're probably going to have to uh, like change, like make an adjustment to our expectations of how much things should cost. Yeah. Yeah. And by that, you know, I, I always think if we really move completely to being sustainable, it will not be more expensive it will be less expensive in the end. Right now we're in the transition, so it looks much more expensive. It looks like much more effort, but if we're really moving, like well, I always imagine, you know, once we did the transition, things are gonna be much more in the flow because then we don't get like 20 shirts a year. Because we're not wasting our money on the cheap stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You can get a really great shirt and there's amazing new business models that, you know, they're working with, you know, how can I, have this feeling of something new, like having something new, and still be sustainable with that. And mm. then, you know, going the linear way of, you know, going to the store, buying, throwing it away or whatever, but like finding ways to, I don't know, you know, switching, swapping clothes with your friends. Yeah. It's yeah. Like you have this experience, this experience of 
something new, right, as yeah. well. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so if I'm looking for slow fashion, what should I be looking for? Well, it depends. I mean, of course, um, as you were mentioning, Hannah, you know, like it could be expensive to think about, uh, first of all, getting sustainable clothing or sustainable brands out there. It could be well, expensive. So if you have, uh, of course, the, the money to invest in that, that would be great. If not, then probably think about, I don't know, buying from a small supplier or like, I mean, um, a small brand, um, you know, like, like Airy, like Wernica, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, that is also supporting small businesses and uh, thrifting, as we were mentioning. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you don't have uh, the money to buy or whatever, and you really want to buy that fast fashion piece, just uh, do it consciously and, and just make it last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So supporting, like, so looking for things from smaller businesses yes. is your number one tip. What about other things like um, certifications or, uh, I don't know, like a, a story of the person who made it or something like that. Is that something that people should be looking for or do you think that's like really going far? No, definitely. I think that's, you know, uh, nowadays everything is storytelling. So mm -hmm. of course, and, and now that all the brands, I mean, in every, every field that, uh, have this freedom to show off, let's say on Instagram and you know, like mm -hmm. we can advertise this kind of stuff. Uh, it's really nice not to follow these brands, to see what they're doing. And I think mm -hmm. that's great. No, that's, that's yeah. Totally and it brings back this consciousness to like someone actually made this for you yeah, yeah. that you can actually wear it. Not just one, not just someone. So many people made it so that you can have this feeling of, you know, feeling great in this yeah. yellow, you know, whatever, uh, piece of clothing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So can you talk more about fostering a relationship with your clothing a little bit more? Cause you were talking about that a little bit earlier. I always like to think of a piece of clothing as like a life on its own. Like it's a seed, you know, if it's, you know, from a plant. So it's a seed. First of all, there's the soil and, you know, you have the plant growing. And so even if it's polyester, you know, it's coming from earth. Like, yeah. so eventually it becomes this piece of clothing. It has a life on its own and the person wearing it becomes part of that life for, you know, a small moment. I like to think of it like that. And that way you started having like a different relationship with it. You're like appreciated more in a way. Yeah. And you can see it as like, a, you know, something that you're procreating. You know, I was talking about uh, this morning about this, the, like the, these knives, you know, that you pass on in your family for generations, for generations. Mm, yeah. And we lost this connection with clothing. It used to be like that with clothing as well. Of course, it's different because it's different materials and it's not as durable as, you know, like metal in a knife or whatever. Yeah. But we used to have these relationships that, you know, we were wearing this shirt and it reminded us of this one beautiful moment that we were with our friends or whatever. We still have that, but it got lost so much on the way because of the fast fashion that's so disconnected from everything. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it happens a lot with the Mexican textiles. I mean, mm -hmm. we still have a lot of vintage and uh, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Like for us, like I'm, I'm Mexican, so I think about, you know, like these clothes from my grandmother or like people that I know that they have these uh, old weepils, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, they are really thick and, and, and they last for, you know, naked. So it's really nice. Exactly. You, you, you get attached to these clothes. It means something to mm -hmm. you. They, 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 as you say, like they, they have even a personality. So mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. And you're, you become part of the past and the personality yeah. when you're wearing it. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We might end up having less clothing in general, you know, if, if we're buying very, things very intentionally and especially if things are more expensive. And so I think also a part of this is normalizing wearing the same outfit like over and over. Mm -hmm. And to a certain degree, you know, the energy of the outfit kind of embodies you or you embody the energy of the outfit. It's like a part of your, your whole like vibe <laughs> right yeah. 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 yeah it's exactly this thing you know when you think about this knife that you pass on in mm -hmm. generations that you know just 
wear the clothing and you know make it come like a, like your thing like yeah. what represents you what who you want to be in this world what supports you to be you right exactly. yeah and and if you believe in energies as you just mentioned I mm -hmm. mean I don't know like I just uh, sold a sweatshirt now and I was texting the girl because she got it today and I just remember all the good memories of that sweatshirt and I said I said Oh, I hope you have fun with it because it has so many good memories when I was living in, in Boston, for example. Wow. You know? So I was, I don't know, a couple of hours ago. So it's really nice, no? You, you get attached. Oh, yeah. Also, when you get attached to them, but you let them go, you mm -hmm. also expect other people because it has a lot of energy and, and, and something from you, you know? It's so nice what you mentioned as well, yeah. that the, this kind of property mm -hmm. way of looking at clothing that we now look at clothing as like property. It's ours, it's mm -hmm. mine. But actually, you know, it's part, like it's part of for for our life for you know a certain time, and then you know we can pass it on, and it's not ours. It's like a life on its own, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay, now I want to hear more about the slow fashion aspects of you guys as brands of Bohetnica and Airy. Bohetnica came uh, in 2016, and basically was uh, inspired by a, a trip in the south of Mexico. So it's really nice that we work directly with artisans and we import clothing from, from Mexico, all handmade. You know, we use sustainable fabrics, uh, sometimes organic cotton, uh, natural dyes, and everything is handmade, like hand embroidered or also like the waist loom, for example. So yeah, it's really, really amazing all the work behind. Wow. It's really amazing. Yeah. Okay, tell me about Ari. About Ari. Yeah. So Ari started kind of like a lab to explore if clothing can really be completely sustainable, like completely in harmony with earth and nature and the planet and not exploiting, not polluting mm -hmm. and so on. So it started kind of like a laboratory, you can say. And so the, the main thing is that it's uh, biodegradable. It's basically you can throw it on the compost in the end. It's a regular piece of clothing. People always ask me, so does it just like dissolve? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a regular piece of clothing. Probably many of us have partly compostable clothing in our closet because organic cotton, linen, hemp, uh, wool, all of that is biodegradable on its own. Once the dyeing procedures start, once um, all the, the threads, the polyester threads, the buttons, the labels, all of that, once that comes in, it's not biodegradable anymore. Even the dye, the dye can make things not biodegradable. Yes, it's full of chemicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, the dyeing procedures is one of the most polluting things in the textile industry. <sighs> So the, the dyeing is a huge oh. issue. Yeah, the microplastics. And the microplastics is yes. another one. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, the crazy part about that is like, in my experience, it's almost impossible to get undyed clothing. Yeah. I only know of maybe the two brands that yeah. do it. It makes me think about when I was in India and like the Ganges was so like dirty and so much textile production happens there, and it's all just like running in this river that should be a natural treasure. I saw the same thing, and this is actually the moment that Aerie started developing when I was in China. Mm. So I saw all of these, you know, oily, colored lakes yeah. and rivers that I was just like, how, like, how can we do this to Earth? Like, mm. how, how is this even possible? Yeah. How, how do we get there? And this is, I got home and I was like, okay. For three days, I couldn't do nothing. And I was like, okay, let's research. Yeah. So what do you, what, um, so describe your clothing, the clothes that you make. So the clothing turns out to be zero waste, meaning that there's no fabric waste. So from the beginning of the design process, the fabric width and all the fabric, I mean, the fabric itself is in the thinking, in the design. And it's not just some pattern put on some fabric and then mm. you don't know what to do with the waste afterwards but that it's really like thought through in the design process already that it's hand dyed um, the hand dyed it's not necessarily for the future true but for now it's hand dyed and wait what do you mean hand dyed what do you mean it's not for the future true i mean um the hand dyeing processes are you know once there's larger quantities and there's already companies that are doing it that are, you know, industrializing the 
plant dyeing processes. I see. So now it's hand dyed because the operation is small, yes. but it would still be sustainable if it was done in, in an industrial yes. way. Okay. Yes, but with plants, with the you know roots and leaves and all of that for plants that create beautiful colors. Yeah, like this one here. Yes. What is the purple? The purple is logwood. <laughs> it's, it's a wood. Oh, Mexico. Oh. No way. <laughs> you can make this purple color from a wood? <laughs> wow. How, where, where did you learn how to do plant dyeing? I, I really just started researching. I went online, started researching, started trying out things, started looking. Actually, wherever you are in the world, you will find directly plants around you. I promise that you can dye with. Wow. Wherever you are. So actually the logwood is for Mexico, but you can actually do things here, like in you know, we're in Germany right now. So you can find everything here that you need. You can find everything, you know, wherever you are, you will find plants that will give color to the textile and will also stick to the textile and not just wash out. You know? mm -hmm. Okay. Last question. Well, I guess second to last question. What do you guys wish people knew about slow fashion? Mm -hmm. Wow, <sighs> there's so many things, but um, I think the first is just to to be conscious. I think that's uh, the most important thing. Um, of course, now everybody wants to follow trends, so let's be conscious about it. I mean, of course, everybody wants to look pretty and have the newest thing, but um, I don't know, just, just be conscious. And, and whenever you are thinking to buy something, just uh, buy something that means really something for you and for others. Uh, that will be my, my advice. I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> really, this, this is what I would so my advice as well. Ask yourself, do I really want it? What does it give me? Is it just a, like a addiction kind of like, is it something that I'm trying to fill inside of myself that it's not really going to make me happy long term? What really makes me happy? What are my values that I believe in? And to try with patience because we're living in a world that is not exactly how we always want it to be. Mm -hmm. But with patience, start integrating those values into yeah. our practical lives, including clothing which we're always surrounded by. I'm always amazed how much we're surrounded by textiles. Like we're always wearing clothes, we're sitting on our couch, we're lying on our bed. Like we have curtains, like everything, everything is like, is everything is textiles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then last thing, I guess, is there anything else that you want to add for people to know? Or alternative question, tell me a, a story related to fast fashion or your brands. Well, in my case, I have to tell uh, something very important that is also another big topic, which is uh, cultural appropriation. Oh, because of yes. Course I work, uh, uh -huh, I work uh, with artisans in Mexico. I think it's one of the big scandals for br uh, big brands. Um, they, they are, you know, copying these designs. So, of course, like, please, 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 please. This is something I was doing one time, a pop-up store, and I have my clothes outside in Iraq. And then someone came. I just heard her and then she was like, oh, I can buy this in, in H&M for 20 euro. And I was like so sad because she didn't even pay attention that it was handmade. She didn't know the story behind. She didn't, you know, appreciate that work. And she just thought right away that she could buy the same thing in, in, in a fast fashion store. So just please, uh, you know, again, no, like be conscious, uh, be conscious about all the work behind and, and always ask yourself, why am I paying this? Why am I paying 20 euro if it's already in a store? Like you just imagine all the price, like all, all the money behind, um, just paying the rent and then the advertising and then the people and then, so <laughs> it's just crazy, no? So uh, cultural appropriation is a big, big topic behind. Mm -hmm. Um, many brands, including mine. Yeah, thank you for that. It's a good reminder. Yeah. Such a good reminder. So important. Yeah, what about you? You've, told a, you've already told a couple stories. Like, I told a couple stories. Yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, the, the main story that was really, you know, really devastating and really like life changing was when I, when I went to China and I saw all of the circumstances in the factories and, um, and it wasn't necessarily, you know, I wasn't like going there 
and it was uh, like completely, you know, people were, you know, there and working, but it was like, I mean, it was for me. It was devastating. I was like, how, how, how did this world get here? And you know, I saw really what we all see probably once before, um, you know, in the documentaries. I saw it live, and I was like, hmm. I'm creating this. I'm allowing this to happen by, you know, going to H and M. And I'm, I don't want to, you know, go to H and M. It's not only H and M. Primark, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. all these fast fashion vertical brands that, like, I'm allowing this to happen because I'm contributing to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm connected to that. So what can I do? I can, you know, change my own habits. I can change my own consciousness. I can change my own values and, that I believe in and actually implement them and live by them and understand that I'm not disconnected from anything. So this was like really life-changing thing for me that we're not disconnected from anything. Like what we see in the news, what we see, yeah, you know, in the documentaries, we're part of it and we can change it. We have so much influence or so much power to, you know, contribute what we would like a world to look like. Just to add something very quick, um, because it's, uh, you can see it everywhere in, on YouTube, for example, uh, watch The True Cost. It's, uh, I mm -hmm. think, a big uh, documentary where you can yeah. see all these, uh, what, what you're mentioning, mm -hmm. like all these, uh, the, the people, you know, behind, so true cost. Yeah, I'll link it in the description yeah. box and I'll also link their socials and stuff so you can check out their brands in the description box. Um, thank you guys so much. That was beautiful. I am so inspired. Thanks so much for the great interview and I'm looking forward to seeing where your brands go in the future. Yay. Okay. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So thanks for to you guys for watching and for just like giving some attention to the topic of slow fashion. And um, if you want to see more content from me, I make videos about vegan food, sustainability and radical self care. You can hit the subscribe button button and uh, hit the like button. And if you have any questions, go ahead and hit them. No, go ahead and put them, put them in the, put them in the comment box below. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.